that failure is very up close and personal uh, for probably easily the majority of the American population. You know, with one out of every two Americans now either in poverty or low income, getting lower all the time, you know, jobs continuing to be offshore with the president's expanding so-called free trade agreements that also, uh, you know, make it impossible for workers to bargain for decent wages in this country. Wages are going down. The president is holding up General Motors as, you know, as the example of a recovery. You know, these are, it's a recovery if you're the CEO, but if you're the worker, your wages have been basically cut in half with these new tier of wage systems. 50 million people don't have health insurance. You know, it's not working, and the both political parties and both Obama and Romney are not really offering anything different. They're pretending to get us back to where we were before, which was a system that was in a meltdown, you know, in slow motion over a period of decades when money has been concentrating at the top and ordinary people have been really struggling to keep their heads above water, uh, to keep jobs and you know, wages that will support a family and will afford health care, you name it. There's really not a thing out there that isn't um, becoming an incredible hardship. While the wealthy few who got us into this fix to start with continue to flourish, their income has basically tripled over the past couple of decades. And the political establishment now makes things worse by imposing austerity on everyday people while squandering trillions on wars that don't make us more secure, a military budget that's basically doubled in the last 10 years, and we are certainly not you know, more secure, we don't have more friends, uh, Al-Qaeda and whoever else, Taliban, they're not weaker. You know, some of their notable uh, leadership has been eliminated, but every time you you know, every time you eliminate one leader, another one arises up immediately to fill their place. You know, it's been well documented. A recent uh, uh, investigative article by the Washington Post made clear how this drone bombing, for example, in Yemen was not making us safe. In fact, it was just proliferating the, the opposition, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in Yemen. So we've been squandering trillions on these wars for oil on Wall Street bailouts and on tax breaks for the wealthy and on a massive wasteful health insurance bureaucracy that provides us less and less health care all the time as we get sicker and sicker. Look at the, uh, you know, the statistics for diabetes in, in teenagers, which doubled over the course of the last 10 years. Twice as many teens now are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. So we're spending more money, going more bankrupt while we get more sick. What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture is that, you know, American institutions, including our political institutions, have been completely hijacked. So, you know, back to your original question about why, you know, why this is happening. Uh, it's very, you know, it's not a well-guarded secret that the system's been bought out. You know, it's uh, billions that the campaigns of the establishment campaigns will be spending this year on the presidential race coming from, you know, ever deeper pockets with rules that permit more flagrant uh, buyout of our democracy than ever. So, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's really not a democracy anymore. It's not serving the 99% by any stretch of the imagination. But why, why is the Democratic Party, you know, because I think that's probably where most of the focus will be when you look at picking up support from mm -hmm. the progressives and from from people in anti-war wing, from peace activists, from... So why is that no longer the vehicle for this particular cause? Yeah, you know, I think the record speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And we've heard, uh, you know, uh, we've heard President Obama talk the talk, but we've seen him walk the walk, or rather run the run, you know, really in the opposite direction from what he's been talking about. And in issue after issue, he's basically embraced the policies of George Bush and then even gone beyond them. So on the, well, on Wall Street bailouts, for example, you know, it was 700 billion under George Bush, but it was more like 16 trillion uh, under Barack Obama. 
uh, on the uh, free trade agreements, which offshore our jobs and undermine wages in this country. We've seen those only expand under Barack Obama. The attacks on Medicare and Social Security as part of this debt ceiling negotiation, that was actually launched by the White House and by Barack Obama. He introduced uh, cuts to Medicare and Social Security. It wasn't John Boehner, it was coming from the White House. The White House was saying, no, we don't need to hold the line at two trillion dollars worth of austerity. Let's go for four trillion dollars worth of austerity. You know, just you know, name your issue. It's really been uh, accelerated in the wrong direction by the president. And, and let me address peace specifically. On day three of President Obama's administration, he intensified the bombing over Pakistan, then he extended it into Yemen and Somalia, where it had never, the drone wars were not taking place before. He tripled the troops into Afghanistan with this Afghanistan surge. And the only reason that he withdrew from Iraq was because he was forced to comply with the prearranged date of withdrawal uh, arranged for, for George Bush. So George Bush beat Barack Obama to the punch, you know, on bringing the troops home from Iraq. And a couple other things have to be named. The incredible crisis in foreclosures, which has displaced about 6 million families with another 12 million at risk. This has been allowed to just, um, you know, explode without mitigation of any sort. And the same for the student debt crisis, where you have virtually an entire generation of students now who are indentured servants without a future because they cannot repay these loans with the kinds of jobs that are available if they're lucky enough to find a job at all. And finally, the attack on our civil liberties and on immigrant rights, which are essentially human rights. Uh, Barack Obama's policies have basically conducted racial profiling and deportation. Uh, uh, yes, that's right, the Secure Communities Program, which by the way is being made mandatory. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that. This is a kind of, um, and it's one of those well-guarded realities of the uh, president's policies, but he's actually declared that secure communities will no longer be optional, so-called commu secure communities. They will be mandatory. It is his hallmark, exactly. And so he's deported more people in four years than President Bush did in eight years. And even with the recent claims a couple months ago that he was going to pull back, you know, and, and uh, straighten up immigration so that upstanding immigrants who've been a clear part of our communities and our economies would not be subject to this very hostile attack of his anti-immigrant policies. He didn't follow through on that either. That hasn't really changed at all. And on civil liberties, uh, you know, he's basically codified the violations of George Bush and then even gone beyond them with H.R. 347, which has criminalized our right to protest, essentially, you know, creating a felony violation for anybody who happens to be at a protest when a um, you know, when a Secret Service uh, agent shows up, by default it becomes a site of special national security. So anyone is at risk, even obeying the law, you know, not you don't even have to be conducting civil disobedience or part of a picket line. You can be perfectly compliant with all rules and regulations and laws, but still you're a felon if, unbeknownst to you, a um, a, a Secret Service agent has shown up and, and the ground on which you stand has suddenly been declared of special national significance. That plus the targeting now of U.S. citizens for assassination. The President has actually codified his right to put you on a list for assassination without having to justify it to anyone. And again, uh, in the uh, in, the, in the, his right to indefinitely detain you and declare you a, a criminal without your ever having been accused of a crime or found guilty of anything before a jury. So the Democratic Party is no longer a party for Exactly. It, it has really. Oh man, on the environment too. I mean, boy, uh, there above all, you know, I think what the president has done has been absolutely have they made steps shocking. In have they? Have they made steps in enforcement? Uh, no, and in fact, you know, they've often declared uh, they've declared critical issues of the environment and human health as off limits for the EPA altogether. So the president has given sort of blanket go-ahead for fracking, which is polluting uh, the few water supplies that remain. 
uh, with the drought, you know, sort of proceeding apace as, as climate change continues so to skyrocket. Natural gas, 100 years of natural gas, natural gas, things like that, sort of things. Exactly, and, and basically establishing a drill baby drill policy, uh, mm -hmm. em embracing all of Bush's uh, ideas, including opening up further offshore drilling, opening up our national parks mm -hmm. and fragile wilderness area, and the Alaskan wilderness, opening them all up for oil and coal and mineral ex exploitation. This is, it's like George Bush on steroids right now. And then he went to Durban, South Africa, and actually undermined the International Climate Accords and said, okay folks, let's just hold off on this until 2020, when the science is very clear that our goose will be cooked. Uh, you know, it's basically over if we haven't started to seriously fix this problem by 2020. So, you know, we have found that each of these constituencies is waking up in a big way around our campaign right now, and we are getting uh, a really enthusiastic, ecstatic reception by groups that used to say to us, well, thanks, but no thanks. We don't want a third party that you're just going to get us in deeper trouble. People have woken up to this fear-mongering, you know, this politics of fear, the fact that it has actually delivered everything that we were afraid of, and that we need to replace the politics of fear with the politics of courage. This is the time for us to stand up and move these solutions forward. As Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand, it never has and it never will. If we're not in there injecting those demands, which are really these solutions, mm -hmm. into the public conversation, into the political dialogue, they will be missing in action as they are right now. And we're just going to continue to surge over the waterfall, which is where we are right now. So it is within our power, as Alice Walker famously says, the biggest way people give up power is by not knowing they have it to start with. And the corollary of that is the biggest way people gain power is by asserting the power we have right now. We do have it. We know that from talking to people in the streets. We do have it from looking at the registration rolls because people are leaving the Democrats and the Republicans by the millions. And we also know it from public opinion polls because each of those policies that we support bringing the troops home, cutting the military budget substantially, uh, creating a Green New Deal, which uh, provides 25 million jobs while we jumpstart the green economy and put an end to climate change and make wars for oil obsolete. All that rolled into one. Health care is a human right under Medicare for All and uh, providing education as a human right, including public higher education, which is tuition free. That too pays for itself. It's an investment where every dollar returns seven. We know that from the GI Bill. These are the solutions that the public is actually clamoring for, demanding. And as we begin to get the word out that people actually don't have to go to the polls and pull the lever for four more years of Wall Street rule, which is effectively suicidal, um, you know, we are being enthusiastically received. And I think, you know, it's a win no matter how you cut it. If we win the office, I'm not holding my breath, but I'm not ruling it out, okay? If we win the office and we turn the White House into a greenhouse, that's a great thing. And there's a lot we can do even on day one just by presidential executive order and appointments. But what can your campaign do, I mean, just, just as, you know, right now as a third party? And, the, and that's the other win. We don't have to win the White House in order to win the day. Okay, and we can, we can win the day because the public supports these solutions. So if we're on the ballot, which we are in Texas, and we're on our way to getting on the ballot in most, just about every state around the country, um, we ensure that these issues cannot be suppressed. They cannot be locked out. These, this is basically the voice of the everyday American. The everyday American has an option to actually be in this election and to drive their solutions forward. So that begins to change the playing field right there. We change the terms of the debate and we can actually move forward healthcare as a human right under a Medicare for All system, which saves us money as well. 